Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. Okay, so in today's video, we are going to be... It, well, if you remember, if you remember previously, when we added a router um, or a switch... Oops. <laughs> switch. Uh, we basically just got these generic router underscore zero, router underscore one, switch underscore two, and test set was kind of generic too, just test set three. And these are actually um, identifiers that I use to sort the nodes in, in a collection of nodes, okay? And they don't really mean anything to anyone. And, and so today in our, we want to be able to change these to some meaningful names for the user. Uh, but still keep these for sorting. So we're going to add a, a new field, and I, I think I kind of touched on it in the last video, and that is, well, let's just go edit it. So we did create an editor previously, right? You go into configuration and view, and and if you remember, it dumped out a lot more stuff. It was everything basically in this, it would dump out everything basically in this um, uh, class node properties. Okay, so it dump out the index, the category, the make, model, host name, and this label, nickname. Now, if you remember, we these two weren't really uh, implemented yet, right? They were just there. And and we what we want to do today is we want to make this nickname what the user gets to see uh, right here, right? So, you know, uh, you don't want to put the... Um, the host name in there because sometimes the host name especially if it's a fully qualified domain name or fqdn <laughs> it can be quite lengthy and and most of the time people now say you know okay go to the dallas switch or the dallas gateway or the dallas you know whatever the new york gateway new york gateway one new york gateway two that sort of thing and people know right and that that's what we want to put here so that's what we're. That's what we did. I'll, I'm going to do a diff on the, just like in the previous videos. I'll do a diff. I'm also going to clean up these uh, names, right here, and uh, I don't know. I might show you that in another video. We'll we'll see uh, how long this video is. But we want. We definitely want to in this video, uh, look at changing this um, this label right here, right, from router underscore zero, which is the actual name of the router in Mogwai to, you know, something more meaningful, okay? So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so I just went ahead. I'm going to do a diff on these files. I don't really know where to start, so I'm just going to start from the top. First thing on the top of our diff list here is the class node properties. That seemed as logical a place to start as any. And uh, you'll see a lot of red, the red on the left and the green on the right. Uh, red means removed, green means added. Uh, don't let that scare you. I didn't change a lot. I just rearranged a bunch of stuff. And, uh, well, I, I deleted this comment down here that was left from, from a previous video. We don't need it any longer. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I kind of rearranged things a little bit. So, uh, so index, category, and make are all kind of left the same. Model is in the same spot. But then on the bottom, I added host name and nickname. And I did this for sorting. So I, I knew where these things were sorted. Uh, so I, and, and so I removed this left and top property and just moved it up to the top. And I added um, a, lay, uh, a comment saying this is the location for the XY coordinates, uh, left and top. And this is no data down here. And then uh, down here is, is a, um, I, I needed for the sorting part, and I don't know if we'll do the sorting in this video, but anyway, I'll, I'll show it to you anyway. It might be a little, little redundant, but anyway. So uh, this this bottom part, B view and B view edit, or B edit, B view and B edit are just a raise of strings, and that, that's to tell, I, I guess I can read it to you. So it's um, our arrays of strings that are, arrays of strings that set the attributes for the public property keys above. Uh, it's, it's either going to set to none view only or view edit or none view only or view edit and uh, basically it's like attributes if you're familiar with uh, I guess any operating system but we're just 
what we're doing is, uh, is I'm saying, okay, category and make. We want, we want the user to be able to see them, but we don't want them to edit them, right? And then edit, of course you have to be able to see it, so it's automatically <laughs> in the B view setting, but we want them to be able to change the host name, the nickname, and the model, okay? So when we pull up our router, we can change the model, the host name, and nickname, but we can't change the make. Because if you remember, when we add them, we add them as a Cisco router or Juniper router or switch or that, that sort of thing. So we, we want, and, and there's reasons why we did that, you know, for the different ways they you log into them. And they have different properties and that sort of thing. And, and uh, I don't know, we might make it more generic later on. But uh, right now, we're just going to leave it the way it is. So, so we don't want them to change the make, but they can change the model. All right, so if it's a Cisco 3845 or 2845 or something like that, or 2811, I mean, then uh, then they'll be able to uh, change it, right? So that's the uh, that's the class node properties. Uh, I don't know what's changed in the project. Probably nothing that I can think of. Let's go into the mod I/O here. This is a module that that is uh, global in scope, and it has a bunch of uh, global variables and and public you know global routines that are used by different different classes right and so instead of copying and pasting the same subroutine I just use this module I think I've explained that in the past and I think the only difference is oh yeah so I added this function this uh, as you can see there's no red so there's nothing to look at on that side yeah so I just added this function for uh, for get nodes properties, get node properties attributes. <laughs> yeah, you just send say what key you're looking for and uh, in the node. Okay, and this is pretty straightforward. It's just saying if the property contains this key and the attribute. Oh, if the <laughs> so in the properties list, it's looking in those those two arrays and it's it's either if it finds it in the edit list and it's view edit. If it finds it in the view list. It's view only, and that's it. Yeah, nothing to that subroutine pretty simple added a public property here so we can pass it around oh this is actually added it to our class key value pair yeah so so now it's more than just a key value pair it's a key value pair with an attribute <laughs> all right and I'm not you know I I, I kind of poked around on this thing and I said you know there's there's probably a more elegant solution than making this attribute but I couldn't find it I kind of poked around and googled for about I don't know 30 40 minutes or something like that and I I didn't really see anything that looked you know fairly easy to implement and actually I didn't find anything that that looked really good so uh, I just kind of put this in there yeah if anyone knows a better way to do these attributes on these key value pairs you know if I want them to you know of course the key needs to be read only the value needs to be read only or editable, right? <laughs> and uh, there's probably a better way than just adding a third property, but I didn't see anything when I was Googling around. I couldn't think of anything, so I just added this. Okay, so third on the list is node edit config. And maybe I should, uh, I was thinking about this before I got started, is uh, maybe I should show you. Okay, so this is the main GUI. <laughs> Right, and then if we add a node, I mean this a router or a switcher or or test set is considered a node. If I if I left, left click on it, I'm sorry, right click on it, and then hit edit. This is the the node editor or node edit main. Let's see where is it? Node edit home. Sorry. And it's also got a node editor XAML. I forget what which that one is. Oh, yeah, this is nothing. Yeah, so node edit home is the main one, right? That's that's this window right here. And I'm just kind of running through this so you know uh, what where we're what we're talking about. There's a lot of node edits in this video. Okay, so this is node edit home. And then if you click on configuration and view. Uh, now this is the node config, so node edit config, and this is what we're looking at right here, right? Okay, clear as mud. <laughs> All right, so 
So we're at node edit config. Let's see here. I, I don't want to. In the class node properties. There we go. Diff node edit config. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is node edit config.xaml. This is the XML portion of it. Uh, there are a few changes in this guy. So the first change is uh, we change that label. It's, it's hard for me to diff this and run the program at the same time. So let me make a screen cap. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so we changed this, um, this data template, uh, the value, and I, we didn't change the, the name. And if you're wondering what that is, so this is the name side right here. Uh, I know that the cursor kind of went away. I, maybe I can do this. And, um, and here's the, uh, the value side, okay? And, and so the, we're, what we're doing right here is we're changing the, the label, uh, changing it from label to a text box. We're keeping the same uh, bindings, uh, but I'm making it read only to be, kind of behave like a, uh, a label, right? It's because we don't want them to click on it and be able to edit it in there. And the reason why is I want to use I want the user to be able to right click and and pull up this context menu that we added. And this this context menu does a couple things. One, when you right click on it, it, it sends an event to the Node Edit Config Visual Basic Code Behind, and and it and it checks the the read write or I'm sorry the view edit attribute to see if if we can edit it. And uh, we can look at that here in a sec, and it'll either pop up this edit, or it will pop, or I think it'll pop it up either way. Let's, I guess, might as, well, might as well run it and look, right? So add, okay, edit, fig. So when we right click on it, yeah, it pulls up edit, and I think it pulls it up, yeah, on any of them, right? So it doesn't do the check at this point. The code behind doesn't check the uh, view, edit proper or attribute at this point. But I, so like if on the make, if we click edit, whoops, edit. Uh, hmm. Okay, that's, uh, isn't that interesting? What happened to my, uh, my pop-up? <laughs> oh, well, Oh, you know, this is, this is kind of goofy. So let me see if I can click, let me show you this, this is, and I don't know how to fix this. So check this out. So, okay. I, I click on edit, right? And config, right? And so nothing, I haven't highlighted anything. So I come up here with my cursor and I right click and now you can kind of see, you know, it, it knows I'm right clicking on this value and I hit edit, but it does nothing. And it's because well, I don't know. See down here, it says no configure name equals. Yeah, so it doesn't work. So if I left click on on any of these, right? If I left click on this and it highlights the whole name value pair, then when I right click on it and hit edit, it pops it up. Anyway, I digress. I'm not sure why it does that. It's kind of goofy and, and I, it's, we'll probably have to fix it in the next video. So uh, yeah, so it's not doing the check the view edit check or attribute check until uh, you click on edit. And uh, we might change that in the future. It just, it was just get us going with the edit, right? Okay, so put that away. And anyway, so now you've seen the menu, it just says edit. <laughs> it's not very interesting. And we'll probably add more stuff to it later. Okay, so that's that piece. And if we scroll down here. Oh, okay, so the rest of this stuff I think are just I'm just changing the labels to text box, text boxes. Let me see, is that, is that truly? Oh, no, this is different down here. And okay, so let me come back up here. Yeah, so I went through here and changed all the labels that, that use the name. Uh, let's see, where is it? Da -da 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 -da. Uh, well, anyway, so if you remember from <laughs> way back when, um, the label, gosh, I don't know what to call this, um, control, 
Is, is label actually a control? I, I don't know. Uh, let's see, what do they call it? Yeah, it's a control. Anyway, so label control will not display an underscore. Go figure. <laughs> So all, all my uh, my router underscore zero was the underscore was being remote. So I had to go in here and change all my labels out to text boxes, and then I had to add is read only, and then I set the background to transparent and uh, turned off the border thickness, blah 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 blah, you know, to basically make the text box look like a, a label, right? So so this. This name right here, this this guy right here, uh, used to be a label, this router underscore zero, but it kept taking out the underscore. So I had to uh, change it to a text box. Uh, that's just one of, one of the weird little things I ran into with WPF. And I kind of Googled around and some people said, I oh, just use text boxes and, and no one really said any kind of fix for the under, underscore. If someone knows, feel free to let me know in the comments, I'd be curious. I don't know if I'll go back and change them, but uh, you know, it'll, it'll make it look a lot better than having to add all this junk up here, the, the different, I guess, attributes for the text box, right? Okay, so uh, let's see, what else did we change? Uh, we changed the, uh, let's see, data grid, auto-generate columns. Oh, I just made them read only equals true. And that was for the, oh yeah, that's that's to, um, there's our little sibling. So when you click in here, right? If you left click in here, and if it's not set for read only, it will let you um, edit the, this. Basically, you can change Cisco to Bob if you wanted to. And uh, and we didn't want that. I wanted, I don't want to edit right here. I want to be able to right click on it because it's got to go do a bunch of checks and, and it might have been cleaner to do a bunch of checks every time you clicked on it but i don't know it, you know it's it's really gilding the lily and i don't mind right clicking on it other than the bug i just showed you uh i don't know if it's a bug or or feature who knows so uh yeah we turned on the read only there and what did we do here Oh, this turned on read only on this on the cell template. So you can't change any of the um I don't know, do we need it on both? Probably not. This one right here is probably not needed. Uh, oh, 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 I remember what this is. Yeah, this one is this is this one was was irritating. This this took me a little while to figure out what was going on. Yeah, let me show you that real quick. This this was annoying. <laughs> That's what this was. Uh, let's turn. Let's get out of this real quick. We'll go to uh, home and uh, oh, let's see. Home. What do? We, oh no, we want Solutions Explorer and Node Edit Config XAML. Let's scroll down here to. Yeah, let's take this out for a sec. And start this, and here it comes. Okay, so add router, edit, edit config. Okay, so so if you notice, now it has added this this extra box down here. And I I went through my my loop, and I'm like, am I adding? You know, what is this thing? You know, I, I thought maybe I I wasn't jumping out of the loop enough and I was adding a blank line somewhere. Well, <laughs> this is this is Microsoft's way of adding a new, this is so you can edit this list. The user can edit this list, basically. They can come in here and go, blah, blah. well, it's set for read only, but the cell is. But the list is editable and this is its new line. Right. The problem with that is I was like, what is this thing? I, so I click on it and I right click and I click on edit and crash. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm looking at this, this crash and I'm going, I'm going, it's enable a cast object of MS internal name, blah, 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 blah. blah. And I'm kind of Googling around. I'm going, what, what, what is this thing? And, 
and you can read this if you want to. It's actually fairly meaningless. It has nothing to do with what the, well, I'm sure it has something to, this is what the compiler is complaining about. Um, or not the compiler, but the uh, debugger is, you know, saying, yeah, this is, this is, this is bad. You know, I, it's basically trying to cast some, some object, right? Into something that it doesn't like. Anyway, it's trying to class, cast in this class KVP and it can't do it. You know, I was like, you know, I Googled around and a couple other people asked about it and, and I didn't really see any decent answers and I'm going, I'm going, you know, why is it adding that? So I finally, I, I think, did I leave it in here? Uh, let's see, where did I add it? Somewhere around here, and we'll look at this here in a minute. Anyway, what I did is I added a, a print statement to just print out uh, what it was adding. Um, let's see, where did I crash at? Yeah, right here. So I, I, I guess I deleted it. Uh, anyway, somewhere around here, I, I guess right here, I just put a debug print statement and just printed, printed out what this is. I was trying to see what it was, you know, what it was, and it said it was a, a new line element. And as soon as I saw new line, I said, you know what? I bet you a dollar to a donut hole that if I turn on read only where it's not editable, it will fix that. And, and sure enough, it fixed it. So, so uh, and that, I, that kind of, that was kind of lucky. I, I turned, I printed out, you know, what that object was, you know, I'll, to do it, I, I could show you, but I, I don't want to waste the time. Anyway, just do a debug print, you know, that object to string. If you just put to string again uh, on, after it, it will uh, dot to string. Uh, it <laughs> you can print out and kind of get an idea of what the hell the thing is, is <laughs> thinks it is, and why it can't cast it, right? I, I couldn't get anything from the debug statement. So that was a little rant on that little guy. That 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 sent me down a rabbit hole for about an hour, I bet. Anyway, uh, let's see. And then we had another read only down here, and and this is for the cells. This is just saying the name is read only. I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's go back up to our templates. Yeah. I guess I could have probably put it up here, this label. Meh. I don't know. I don't know why I split it up like that, but I, I could probably add it to both of them. I don't think it really matters. But uh, I didn't. Yeah, maybe we'll come back and clean this up later. All right. So let's go look at the code bind here. And uh, yeah, as you can see, there's quite a few changes in this one. Okay, let's see. What do we add? Uh, okay, a couple comments. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Sorry, my, my brain is, is, wasn't engaged here. Okay, yeah, so um, this is for our uh, list box. And when we're going, this is just a loop going through. This is this is what builds that list, right? That's And this is where this... Um, for each i in pi, which is each basically line in, in our um, property info. Yeah, so this is the, the for loop that I'm, that I'm looping through to uh, build uh, this list right here of the property info that we're getting from the you know, properties file, right? And I added this, I had to add the attribute property, <laughs> if you will. And it also has, it's, it's just calling this new function, get properties attribute, which uh, we looked at in uh, this, uh, the module mod IO, right? And, uh, and it's just returning the name and, or it's, it's using the, the name and sending, passing the node and just pulling out the attribute value. It's nothing really exciting. And that this is just a little check I'm doing. So it's saying, okay, if it's, if it's, uh, in Microsoft and Visual Basic ease. If not, if not KV, KVP dot attribute like none, uh, which is, I don't know how many, how many negatives is that like none? So not like none. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll let you work on that one. 
And, and what this does really right here, this, this if statement is, uh, uh, let's see, where's our class node properties here? So like the index value is, means nothing to the uh, uh, user. It's only for our use, uh, you know, in the, in the code. So as you can see, it doesn't have a view or edit attribute. So we don't show it at all. They, they, don't, they, they don't need to see that. And, uh, and they also don't need to see the left and top coordinates of it, right? So yeah, that's, that's all that, that thing is doing. Let's see, where are we? I think we lost our... Oops. Okay, so that's, that's what that's doing right there. It's saying if it's not, if it's not like, not, <laughs> if it's not like none, uh, then, then go ahead and add it, right? And, uh, and then here's the, here's our new edit value, uh, subroutine that we added for the menu item edit. Okay. That we looked at just a second ago. And it, of course it's using routed events to call it and pass the information to, and let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Oh yeah. This is where it was crashing. <laughs> I remember that. We just talked about that, didn't we? Yeah. So this is where it was crashing. There's a little debug statement. So and I, I tried actually using this. So I said if select KVP, uh, you know, before this cast, I think I, I did it off this. I said if this selected item is nothing, right, this is nothing statement, and it still would crash because it's not nothing, it's something, it's just an object that it can't cast. Anyway, I digress. I don't want to harp on that thing anymore. Yeah, so we're just checking right here to make sure this thing's not empty. If it does return, and then we go check the, the attribute. If it's a view edit, then ba basically we just care about the edit portion of it. Then we go ahead and call our new edit property page. Okay. And that's, that's these two pages down here that we'll look at here in just a second. Sorry. It's a one page down here, the XAML and the VB It's two files. All right. And the navigation service is how we switch pages, right? And uh, otherwise, if it's just a view only, then it just pops up this view only uh, message box. Okay. All right. Excellent. Okay. So next on the list is this node edit home XML. And yeah, I don't think there's much in this guy. This is, this is the screen before this one. This is where we, we select configure, right? For the node. And, uh, and I think all I did, yeah, see, I just changed these labels to text boxes. And I think, uh, oh, it looks like I added a, a space, a blank line. Uh, yeah, not, I'm not sure what that, that's just kind of weird right there. Why, why does it highlight that? Is there anything there? No. Anyway, um, so that's it. And that was to, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and show you what that is. That was for this, um, oops. That's for this right here. Okay. Before it would just say router zero and it would delete out the underscore. And so I changed it to a text box with all those other attributes I showed you earlier. And now it's happy. It shows the underscore. Okay, and let's see, is there anything in the code behind? Oh, yes there is. Uh, let's see, what is all this stuff? Uh, view button. Oh yeah, I remember what this is. This is, uh, oh shoot, I already closed it. Let's go ahead and look at this real quick. This is something I added. Um, this was just, this is just a little house cleaning stuff. So before I used to be able to click on configuration or status or testing or reports, and you pretty much got the same thing. You got this, this node config, right? But now, so now if you click on status and you hit view, it just says status selected, right? And what, and or let's go back, or if you hit testing, view, then or reports, so 
what I'm doing is I'm adding some logic to this thing. So when you hit configuration view, you get the configuration and not and before any of these would do it. And it's just going, let's just kill this guy. And uh, you can see that in the code right here, I think. Oops, we don't want to break point, do we? So before, yeah, you just, it just, if you clicked on the view button, it didn't matter what you selected, it just went straight to the node config. And I added some logic in there to just a bunch of if else statements, and uh, or else if statements, sorry. And um, I said, okay, if it's if you click on configuration, then go here, and uh, and this other stuff is is for later when we add in our reports or testing and, and some other stuff. And and we will add this stuff later. The status is good. Testing will be probably huge. And reports, I don't know. You know, you know the management types. They got They got to have their pound of paper, right? So. <laughs> So anyway, we got we got to have some kind of reporting, and, uh, and then of course this is uh, invalid selection. And uh, okay, so that's about it with that. Let's go look at our new properties files. Okay, we'll look at the the node edit property XML XAML, and um, just to show you where that is on the GUI, that is edit. View. Um, yeah, so that's when you when you click on something like the host name and edit. That's this page right here, okay? And as you can see, it just has edit property for uh, the name, router underscore zero property, host name. And this is where you actually edit the property. So you can just say, you know, uh, Bob's your uncle. Okay, and then you hit save. And then you go back, and now your host name is Bob's Your Uncle. Yeah, so let's go look at the, what's going on there, okay? Let's see. Whoops, that's not it. Oh, that's right, it's a new file. <laughs> There's no diff in a new file. So, um, okay, the XAML, like I said, it's a page file. Uh, and this class name is node edit property. And basically, uh, to, to make this so uh, I don't bore you to tears with all this, this is just a copying and paste of, I think it was a config page, or, or maybe the node editor page. No, no, not the node editor page. It was a copy, and basically I just copy and pasted the pages, and then I just came in here and, and hacked it up. And as you can see, it's... It's very similar to like the config page. If we did a dip on the two, I'm not going to do that. I'll let you do that if you want to. But it's basically the exact same thing. We're just basically uh, building a column and row of one, uh, one text box. Let's see. Yeah. So this is the label. We don't care about that. Text boxes. Read only. Okay. Here's the the name. Okay. And let me let me get a screen cap of this so we can look at it while we're talking about it. Yeah, so here's the, the name right here. It's just a read only and this all this stuff is read only. The name and the property, that's that's uh, these two boxes right here and then we have a text box right here that is this guy right here and it's actually a real text box that you can edit stuff <laughs> that you just saw. Then we have a button and the button, or is a button here? Oh, here's a button. Okay. Really, the uh, it's the same as what we've just been looking at. We're still binding to the value. I'm um, and, and the code behind. Uh, we'll look at that here in a second. You can see I'm passing the data context, so it can you know use the value. And uh, let's see, is there anything interesting here? Not really. This is all. This is all basically copy and paste. Uh, I mean, a little bit of a formatting change. I'm not going to go through the formatting. You guys can figure that out. It's it's confusing to say the least. You know, you have to just kind of tinker with this thing a little bit to, uh, you know, to make it look like this. But basically, 
if, if you don't know. So this has got two columns and there's column one and column two and and then you got three rows. Here's row one, two, and three, and four. Oh, how does that work? See, I don't even know how it works. Um, <laughs> let's see, column row zero, row one, row two. Okay, there's three rows. And, uh, oh, here we go, row four. I didn't even add a row four on here, so, yeah. <laughs> That doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? And then the columns, here's a column span two, columns, so everything's basically in the same column. I don't even know if I'm using, oh, here's column one for this for this guy, where is he? This edit property. So uh, yeah, this, this is bizarre right here. And, and and I could probably tinker with it and I'll let you tinker with it. It's, if you really wanna get, you know, sexy with this thing, you probably, you know, make it look a lot better. This WYSIWYG editor is, is useless. Uh, <laughs> if someone knows how to use this thing efficiently, I wish they, they would comment and let me know because this, this is useless. I, I don't know, that, can anyone use this thing? I mean, even zoomed in, I'm zoomed in, name, property, here, I, here's a column one and column two that says column one. I, I don't know. This thing is worthless. And the buttons, you can't see the button and and I don't know. This this is it's just worthless. The whole thing's worthless. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I I the way I do it, I don't know if other how other people do it, but the way I do it is is uh I just tinker, you know, I take an example of something that works and I tinker with it until it I I make it look like it's going to work okay and if you look right here you can see i've actually chopped off part of the save button right here because i didn't do it right so so we'll have to clean that up later <laughs> yeah a gui layout tutorial this is not i mean we're doing the wpf stuff because i wanted to keep this i'm sorry the xaml stuff because i want to keep this focused on wpf but <laughs> yeah, this this GUI is uh, this 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 editor is bizarre to say the least, and and I should probably upgrade to 2019, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll make that another video, okay? Okay, so now I've completely went off the tracks here and forgot where I'm at. Uh, let's see. So uh, anyway, that's the XAML. I think we kind of looked at this. It's it's nothing real special. It's a copy and paste from I think Node Edit Config or something, or maybe Node Edit Home. Let's see what does Node Edit Home look like. Oops, I didn't want to do a diff on it. Yeah, see, Node Edit Home's got a save button or sorry, view button and and I think it's a copy and paste of Node Edit Home, and then I just added a few things to it. Okay, so last but not least, let's go look at the code behind for the node edit properties file. Let's see, and this is also kind of a cut and copy and paste of node edit home. We're setting our data context to, oh, by the way, so yeah, so if you're, uh, I don't know if we showed this, but uh, anyway, from node edit config, right, we're passing, oh, we did look at this, that's right. We're passing uh, the key value pair, and I'm passing it by reference, not not by uh, object. And we're passing the uh, the parent node. So we're passing basically we're passing the key value pair, uh, which is the you know key value pair <laughs> exactly, and uh, and the class node. Okay, so and yes, the class node does have the class key value pair. Well, I mean, it's it, this is this is built right. This is using uh, the class. This is a separate class that's in mod IO module, and uh, but this is so we know we know this is what we it's been selected. This is the node that has all the information, right? And that's basically what we got going on here. I went ahead and set the data context to the key value pair, and I just said my node is the parent node print this stuff out in the debug. And then in the text box name, I uh, I just, 
I, and, and I'm setting it to the nickname. And yeah, and I did that earlier too. I don't, maybe I glossed over that. If I missed anything or you're confused on anything, let me know. I, I know I've been kind of jumping around on this a little bit. I, I mean, there's a lot of files that were added. I'm not doing a lot, but you know, I touched, you know, geez, how many files? I created two new ones and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven files. So uh, that, that's a lot. You know, and and so anyway, if I if I glazed over something, just let me know in the comments, and I'll I'll clarify it. Yeah. So if we look at the code behind, I'm sorry. If we look at the XAML, so we're binding the nickname property. Oh, uh oh, where am I at here? Ah, I click on. <laughs> sorry, I I clicked on the wrong thing. I'm like, where am I? Uh, edit property. Here we go. Okay, so uh, da -da -da, where are we here? It's um. Uh, so we got the name and the property, and of course, you know, I, I can't use these. So here's the name, the property, and we want this guy, and and yeah, so. The name, I think, yeah, the name right here is what we what we're doing. So, yeah, here's the here's the text box. Here's the name of the text box. It's called text box name, and and that's what this is doing. It's saying the text box name's text is this nickname. Okay, so we want we want this property to be the oh sorry this property right here the name. To be its nickname, and in this case, it just happens to be router zero, and uh, you know, that's its default. Right? We just initialize everything with that. And if you've been watching these videos, you probably know that already. And I did this because I couldn't, I didn't want to set the data context to the to the class node, and then try to mess with this key value pair. So I, I as a data context, so I set the data context to the key value pair, and we just needed the name out of this class node here and I think that's all we all we use the that for isn't it let's see uh, let's see my node dot name oh yeah so we get oh no we don't so the parent is so we do my node dot name oh, that's in the debug statement that doesn't mean anything and then nickname then um, oh where is it let's look at this Okay, so name is, oh, this is the nickname. Yeah, this is the nickname, this is the property. Yeah, so we're just using it once, right? And uh, yeah, that's why I didn't want to set the data context to it because we only needed the name out of it. And uh, I think I could have swore I used it for something else. I, let's see, let's look at this real quick. Okay, so we're getting the, you know, the class now, we're getting the name out of it. Or, I'm sorry, the nickname out of it. Um, I know the name, I know data context. Oh, yeah, I guess I, you know, for the debug, maybe we're using it. I, I don't think I'm using it. My node.prop key. This is the, um, yeah, so this is using the, the call by name, which is a reflect, reflection object, or, or it's reflection, right? And uh, we we've used this call by name before. If you remember when we we're parsing through some some data when we we're saving off the config file, and uh, yeah, so it's it's using a property file, and uh, so we also needed it here. I I just spaced out earlier. <laughs> we needed, but we we definitely need it if we're going to save the value to the property file, right? Because property of file is associated with the my node object. And um, and then we got to send the, set the key and and the value right for it. Yeah, I don't know. I was sitting there earlier. I I was just spacing out. I I couldn't remember what I was using it for. But yeah, we have to save the value off right. And uh, I think that's it. And we can, let's we can go look and see the way it works real quick. That might be somewhat interesting. So. Uh, so we say edit config, and uh, I tried this earlier. Whoops, 
No, nope. you gotta right click. Yeah, see this is, so this is, you gotta right click and edit. And then you come in here and say, uh, uh, Bob's your uncle, All right? We save this, okay? We can go back and look at it. And then we just close this. Now, if we edit it again, of course, it will it will show Bob's your uncle. But and this is something I was thinking about. We'll probably do this in another video, but you have to make sure to save this, right? Uh, otherwise, it won't take. And uh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. So I, I have a file that we, this is our general config file we've been using. And uh, you can see right here, I tested a couple. We can go ahead and do this one if you want. And uh, so the host name, so this will be, so this is the Cisco Dallas switch. And this will be the, oh yeah, let's go look at them real quick. So I think I kind of, oops. Big model theory. Yeah, so here's the Dallas Cisco gateway.muxall.com and then I just call them Cisco Dallas. Probably should have just said switch or Dallas switch or something like that. Yeah, so here we can go config and then the host name. So this is a FQDN type host name. Oh, God. oh, there it is. Oh, no, it didn't. I could have swore I say I, I did a control C earlier. Let's see. What is this host name? I'm come up with something real quick. Let's see. Uh, it's this, uh, Dallas. Cisco. Oops. Type router, uh, or let's call it gateway. Dot muxall dot com. We'll save that off. Go back. Come down here and uh, nickname. You want something short, so I'll we'll just call it the the uh, Dallas Gateway. Okay. That's just going to be kind of nice too, I guess, but it's not that important. Oh. Did I not hit save? Config. Oh, I did. It did not update this. I thought it did. Okay, so file, save. Config, view. Okay, so, well, we've got a bug. I, You know what? I, I tested this and I guess I, I did, I could have swore. See these, uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, let's, let's just reopen it and it, this would probably be easy enough to fix so uh, so I saved it all right and um, and when I do a file save like this I should have in the background did another open right if I had just done another open on this it would have just kind of flashed for the user but it would have updated all this. But what's really strange about this is so with all this binding stuff going on, as you can see, it's not binding very well. And and so we've got something that's not, you know, right in here. It's it's just a one-way binding going one way, it's not going backwards. And and maybe in the future we'll come back and see if we can clean this up a little bit. But right now we got our save going, so that's good. Thumbs up, right? So now we can uh, start naming all this stuff. We can give it uh, uh, host names for our, you know, meaningful, routable host names, all right? So uh, yeah, this is good. This is we're, this, this is actually becoming meaningful. So now when we go to, uh, you know, send command on these guys, all right? We can actually pop in the host name. So what's probably what we're probably going to need on this is. Um, now the host name should work. I was thinking maybe an IP address, but but yeah, that, that should be resolvable, right? So anyway, that's it. So don't forget, you can support the network engineering video blog by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, <laughs> that's about it for this video. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. That helps, and hit the subscribe button. That really helps. 
you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.